Hi there, this is Doug Penta from GlidePass Consulting. And today we're gonna to take a look at Advanced Risk and ServiceNow, which is a plugin within the GRC IRM suite of applications. So what is Advanced Risk and why would we want to consider upgrading to it? So Advanced Risk is a plugin introduced in Orlando release that expands on the functionality of what I'm calling Classic Risk. Um, it still leverages many of the original risk tables that Classic Risk provides, but provides further functionality. Once an instance is upgraded to advanced risk, uh, it may not revert back to classic risk. So this is something I do warn customers uh, if they're using previous functionality from regular risk management, such as risk scoring with simple impact and likelihood calculators. I, I do like to caveat that if we switch to advanced risk, we'll no longer be able to use those features. Now, as a ServiceNow's customer's decision to upgrade to advanced risk likely stems from a desire to take advantage of features such as the advanced risk assessments, uh, more robust risk identification process, risk aggregation and risk rollup of risk scores to parent top-level risks, risk events, risk assessment scoping, and risk assessment scheduling. And we're going to get into those features in a little bit more in depth here. So advanced risk assessments and scoring. These are configurable uh, multi-factor risk calculators that are available on uh, risk assessment methodology records. So uh, what you do when you're first setting up advanced risk is you set up your risk assessment methodology records based on the types of risks that you are assessing risk for, and then you choose those applicable entity classes. Um, so we're going to, in a few minutes, uh, show you how to configure that within the instance, but this is really the bread and butter of uh, advanced risk on the risk assessment methodology and the different ways we can assess risk. Another feature of advanced risk is risk identification. So risk identification is the process of determining risk that could potentially prevent the program, enterprise, or investment from achieving its objectives. Using the risk identification workflow available as part of our advanced risk product, second line managers can design and send a questionnaire to respective business owners. And based on these qualitative responses, they can identify and map the relevant risks. So risk identification is really about identifying uh, those new risks within our organization that we'll want to put through assessment and ultimately determine a response to and monitor those risks in the coming future. Another feature we have is risk aggregation and roll-up. So we can define top-level risks and roll up the risk scores for child risks up to those top-level risks. Um, now, Typically, you'll define a risk statement or entity hierarchies, and this is how you define your parent-child relationships for the risks, and you can roll up the inherent control assessment and residual risk scores individually up onto those parent-level risks. Another feature within advanced risks is uh, risk event. So risk events are potential or actual financial and non-financial losses, near misses, and gains that occur within an organization. Risk events are also known as loss events or loss entries. So uh, with advanced risk, we have a feature, a risk event table and uh, risk event records that allow us to intake uh, risk events. Um, they can actually be reported via a service portal record producer from any employee in the organization. And that risk event can be analyzed by the risk um, analyst team and eventually approved as a valid risk event. Um, and related to any uh, previous risks that are on the risk register or a, a new risk could be uh, put into the risk register as a result of a risk event being reported. And the final two features of advanced risk I wanted to cover was uh, risk scoping and the risk assessment scheduler. So we can create a risk assessment scope to define and identify risks for an entity identify assessors and approvers for the assessments and define the frequency of those assessments. Uh, so we'll take a look at that risk scoping uh, feature and then the risk assessment scheduler enables us to schedule risk assessments in bulk. The next feature I'd like to point out within advanced risk is risk identification. So I've navigated to a risk identification configuration record here and you'll see that we can configure an identification configuration for entity class or a table. So we can uh, generate a risk identification based either on entity class or a particular record within a table. Now, if you choose entity class, you'll be able to uh, choose a target entity class based on the type of entity 
that it is, and then you'll be able to choose whether identification questionnaire should be included within the risk identification and also whether an inherent assessment should be performed. Down here, you'll see the ability to choose the questionnaire um, from ServiceNow's survey engine that will allow you to choose uh, configure questions that'll be part of that questionnaire. Okay, so as you can see, we're logged in here to an instance of ServiceNow with the advanced risk plugin activated. And the first feature I wanted to point out is the uh, risk assessment methodologies feature um, where we can configure a risk assessment methodology or RAM for short, which will apply to our risks by risk type. So as you can see, there are RAM records configured um, out of box, actually uh, comes out of box when you activate the plugin for uh, different types of RAMs, whether they apply to like IT risks, application risks, or operational risks. So if I create a new uh, risk assessment methodology here, we'll see that we can define a name, a domain area for the risk assessment methodology. We can choose what type of record we want to assess. Now, of course, often within risk, we'll just want to assess a risk record um, and then choose the applicable entity class for those risks. But another interesting feature that uh, advanced risk allows us is to assess risk against any object in ServiceNow. So that's any, any record with any table within ServiceNow, we can assess risk against, uh, such as like a business application record or whatnot. But we'll choose uh, a risk to assess against a risk record. And then down here, we'll see that we have the ability to do an inherent risk assessment, do a control effectiveness assessment, or residual risk assessment. Now, any or all of these can be chosen for the risk assessment methodology. And ultimately, when we create a new risk record uh, within the risk application, and we, we choose assess, we go to that next stage of assess, um, ServiceNow is going to generate a risk assessment record uh, with an advanced risk, and it'll leverage um, anything that we've configured on this methodology record here. Now, as I mentioned, when we generate a risk um, and then put that risk into an assess state within the classic risk module, um, if we do have advanced risk uh, enabled, ServiceNow is going to create a risk assessment record based on the uh, risk assessment methodology that's configured for the entity and the entity class for that risk. So I've opened up a risk assessment record here. As you can see, uh, we have it apply to a company. Um, it applies to a risk record itself. So this is really the, uh, we'll call it the parent risk that this assessment will, to, will apply to. It's in that assess phase. Uh, but from here on, it's going to leverage the functionality of advanced risk. Um, as we can see here, we have the inherent risk score, control effectiveness score, and residual risk score. And um, ultimately, this record will be put through a process and um, put in monitor state. And this, within the context of advanced risk, will serve as our risk register.